Hello, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with a new tutorial just for you. And today, as you can see, it's rather fuzzy. <laughs> um, I am going to show you a really, really, really simple, great pattern. It is called the Granny Star Blanket. Now, I did do a star blanket once before, but this I found even easier. It's only a three round repeat. Very, very, very simple. And I, I really wanted to try using da, 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 the Karen Latte Cakes. Now, this yarn, as you can see, is super duper fuzzy. And I wanted to use a pattern where I was going into stitch spaces as opposed to into stitches. And this was ideal. And I used a total of three cakes for this piece. It makes a decent sized throw, a great sized baby blanket, and is so, so soft. No joke. And in spite of the fact that this yarn is really, really fuzzy, it was very easy to work with. And just to give you an idea, as far as the latte cakes, this, by the way, is in the colorway of Blackberry. Very, very subtle purples. Love it. And as far as the yardage and so forth, do 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 ah, there we go. It is 530 yards, and it is 58% acrylic, 42% nylon. So soft. Oh my gosh. Loved working with this stuff. And of course, you can make this piece as big or as small as you want to. Just keep in mind, of course, that if you want a really sizable blanket, that you're going to need quite a few of these. Um, it was getting to the point where I could only do a couple of rounds per skein. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to leave off at three skeins, you know, and uh, I, I still am pleased with the size. Um, and so with this particular yarn, I used, where is my hook? No, wrong hook. I have my other hook. It's a J-sized hook. Ah, here we go. Yes, with this yarn, I used a size J, six millimeter hook. Now, for the example for today, I'm going to use this stuff, the Super Saver Red Heart Pooling Yarn in the colorway of Papaya. And I'm going to use, for this example, a size I, 5.5 millimeter hook because it's not quite so fuzzy wuzzy and it's a bit more of a straightforward yarn although this was a delight to work with believe you me and uh, I of course also I will give a link to the pattern in the description box down below really 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 simple okay so without further ado let's get started Alrighty, round one now, before I officially get started, I just wanted to make note that no, I am not sponsored by either brand, um, but I always like to let you guys know what it is that I use. Also, as far as the latte cakes are concerned, it really did not shed. I was a little afraid working with it that it was going to get all, you know, shedding like, uh, you know, uh, like a pet, but actually I did not have that problem whatsoever. So... After doing your slip knot, we need to chain up five. One, two, three, four, five. And then slip stitch into that first chain to form a ring. Like so. All right. Now, the pattern calls to chain two as your first double crochet. Me, I like to chain up three personal preference. One, two, and three. And then, just like, you know, a normal granny square, we need two more double crochets. And I'm going to work into this ring right here. So we now have three double crochets. A little cluster of three. By the way, as far as me using this yarn, I happen to have it, you know, laying around, no particular reason, okay? So then, after we have our three doubles, we then need to chain two, and, <clears throat> excuse me, go back into the ring with three more doubles, 
and that's going to be our second cluster. We need a total of four clusters. You know, this is very standard fare as far as any sort of granny project. And yep, I know for those of you that have been following me, you know I love the granny. Can't help it. So we did our three doubles, chain two, three doubles, another chain two, three more doubles. Also, by the way, I'm working over my tail as I do my stitches. It makes it a lot easier in the long run. Alrighty. And then chain two. And then three more doubles, our last three, into that center ring. Okay. Chain two. And then to finish off the round, go into the top third chain where we started with a slip stitch right there and then do a little slip stitch like so and that is the end of round one alrighty alrighty round two and this is going to pretty much follow suit with, you know, the normal granny square for now. So we're going to slip stitch our way to the next corner. So into the next two double crochets, slip stitch and slip stitch, and then slip stitch right into the corner. And then since we're now in the corner, chain up three two more double crochets chain two and then three more double crochets into that same space there we go all right now you do have a bit of an option here. What I did when I made my blanket was I did a chain one and then continued on. However, with the pattern, it dictates no chaining in between. That's totally up to you, okay? It makes it a bit tighter, more together, and so forth if you don't have the, the chain ones uh, on the, the sides here, okay? Totally up to you. So I personally, I'm gonna do the chain one. It's always in the corners that you're doing the chain two though, okay? So with that being said, I did my chain one, going into the next corner with three doubles, chain two, three doubles, You know, I always say, whatever works best for you, go for it. You know, there's really nothing set in stone with what we do. So I did my three doubles, chain two, three doubles, chain one, and into the next corner, three doubles, chain two, three doubles. And quite often, when we do march to the beat of our own bongos, as I always say, we end up with some really interesting results sometimes. So now I need to chain two, and then three more doubles. I also like to think of it as thinking outside of the box, and I totally encourage any and all of you to try it sometime. You might surprise yourself. All right, so chain one, going into the next corner space, with three doubles, chain two, and three more doubles. Okay. 
And then last but not least, chain one and into the top of the first double crochet, do a slip stitch. There we go. And then we want to get back into the corner again. So slip stitch into the next two doubles. And then last but not least, into that corner space, a slip stitch. Always want to be in the corners at the beginning and the end. All right, and that is the end of row round. I always say round and row reverse whenever I'm doing a pattern. I don't know why that is. So that's the end of round two. All right, round three. Now this is where things get a little bit different with this particular round. So starting off as the same, gonna chain up three, and then two more doubles. Chain two, three more doubles. And that's normal, right? Well. Typically, in the next chain one space, we would just do three doubles. Ah, this is where it gets different. So we did our three doubles, chain two, three doubles, chain one. Now into this next space, we're creating another point of our star. So we need three doubles, chain two, and three more doubles. And this seems kind of counterintuitive, like it's going to be crowded. Trust me, it will work. All right. So we now have right here another point for our soon-to-be star. All right, so then, since we've reached another corner, going to do the same thing after we do this bunch, chain one, and into the corner, three doubles, chain two, three doubles. And that's what we're going to be doing in every space, regardless of whether it's a corner or a side piece. So one more for the three, chain two, three more doubles, Okay, chain one, and into this space, three doubles, chain two, three doubles. I told you it was easy, didn't I? So that's two, three, chain two, and three more doubles into that same space. If my yarn wouldn't split. <laughs> By the way, I hope all of you are doing really well today. Yesterday, not so good here. We had a really, really bad snowstorm, much worse than they had predicted. Um, and because people weren't prepared, oh, it was bad. All right, so we've got our three doubles, chain two, three doubles, and then we chain one, and then we've reached Another space, so it's three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Yeah, they were only predicting about, you know, maybe an inch or so, but it was very slushy. So got my three doubles, chain two, and three more doubles. And there were a lot of accidents, unfortunately. Fortunately for me, I wasn't in one of them, but oh, it was terrible. All right enough of my yammering. And then so I chain one, three doubles, chain two, three doubles. It's all the same on this round. Ooh, missed apply. There you go. One more double, chain two, and three more doubles. Well, it's not quite yammering. I like talking to you. You know, it's our way of catching up when I can't, you know, when I don't have time to do a live stream. Which I would like to do again sometime soon. 
All right, and then chain one, and we're almost there. Looking star-like already, and it's not bunching up. You know, when I first started this pattern, I was afraid that it would, but it really doesn't. So into this next space, three doubles, chain two, three doubles. go, chain one, and last but not least, in this last little space, three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Chain two, three more doubles. Alrighty, chain one, and then we need to connect to the top third chain with a slip stitch. And then we need to get into that corner space, so slip stitch into the next double, slip stitch into the next, and then slip stitch into the chain two space. Ta da! And that's the end of round three. Gorgeous. All right, round four. So for round four, we're only going to be working into the points, not into the spaces in between the points. All right, so to begin with, we need to chain up three, one, two, three, two more doubles, chain two, three more doubles into the same space, okay, chain one, and like I said, we're skipping over this space right here, and we're just going to go into the next point with another point. So after doing our three doubles, chain two, three doubles, and a chain one, going into the next point with three doubles, chain two, and three doubles. Okay, chain one, skipping the next space, going into the next point with three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Chain two, and three more doubles into that same space. Chain one. Skipping this next space, going to the next point with three doubles, chain two, three doubles. And this skipping the space actually is what's going to create uh, what I call the valleys of the star. You know, you've got the points and you have the valleys where there has to be a decrease of sorts. So chain one. Skipping that next space, going into the next point with, again, yes, three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Also, this would be a great stash buster, and I know how so many of you look for projects that work for that sort of thing. All right, 
chain two, three doubles, Also, you know what? This, I think, would look really great using an ombre because there's no distinct division of color. You know, you could use Karen cakes, you know, really whatever you have. Um, it's just such a fun pattern. Very versatile what you can do with it. So again, into the next point. Our three doubles, chain two, three doubles, there we go, chain one, go into the next point. Oops. Chain two, three more doubles into that same point. Also, since you're working into the chain spaces and not into the stitches themselves, this is a great piece where you really don't have to pay too terribly much in the way of attention to what you're doing, which you know I love. All right. And then going into the next point, it's actually the last point. Two and three, chain two and three more doubles. One and two and three chain one, and then last but not least, we have to skip over this space, going directly into the top third chain of our first double crochet with a slip stitch, like so, then slip stitch into the next two double crochets, and then finally into the chain two space. Ta -da. All right, let me lay this out for you. There we go. Isn't that pretty? It's a little bright, but it's very pretty. All righty. See, when we skipped those spaces in this round, it compensates for the fact that it grew as quickly as it did. And, uh, you know, it's very, very simple and we shall continue on. Um, you know, it's like I said, only a three round repeat. So this is easy peasy, don't you think? All right. So we'll, we'll keep going on to the next round. All righty. All righty. Round five. Now, technically rounds five and six are actually the same. It's Five and six are the same, and then seven is the different one. It's only a three-round repeat. I keep saying that, I know, but it's true. So we're going to start by chaining up three. Two more double crochets into the same space for our first cluster. Chain two. Three more doubles, because right now we are in what I call a point of the star. There we go. Chain one. All right, now into the next chain one space, going to do a regular cluster of three doubles. Chain one. And then since we reached another point, it's going to be three doubles, chain two, three doubles. So three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Chain 
chain one. And we have another valley space, if you will. So that's three doubles, just a normal cluster of three. Oops. Chain one, and then we reached another point. So three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Chain two, three doubles. Chain one, another valley, so that's three doubles. Chain one, another point, so three doubles. Chain two, three doubles. And really, this is going to follow suit for the rest of the round, which I will do the rest off camera. And then we'll continue on to round six. It's only slightly different. It's just another set of clusters, quite frankly. So basically, every time you hit a point, it's going to be three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Every time you hit a valley, it's just in between your points, a chain one, three doubles, chain one, another point. Very, very simple. And just going to keep on doing the same thing around until you reach the very beginning, where in this space, since it's a valley, it would be three doubles, then you chain one and slip stitch to here, into the next double, into the next double, and then into the chain two space to finish round five. Alrighty, I'll meet back up with you in a bit. Alrighty, round six. Even though it is essentially the same thing as round five, well, I wanted to be thorough and go over it with you just in case. So what I did was, like I said, I ended off by, you know, doing my three, my chain one, and then slip stitching to this, I guess, you know, orange, light yellow, you know, if you will, um, uh, slip stitching into there, then slip stitching into the next two, and then finally slip stitching into the chain two space, just as I said. And then, so you chain up three, two more doubles, and then a chain two and three more doubles. Chain two, oops. And three doubles. There we go. And so basically what this row amounts to is continuing on after doing the, the point clusters, it's a chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, chain one, and then we've got another point and the points are always the same. So chain one, three doubles, You know, like I said, it's really just a matter of there's one more cluster to contend with, you know, and it's really not a big deal. All right. And so again, it's pretty much the same thing for the, the rest of the entire round. So chain one, and then I've reached my point. So three doubles. and then chain two, and then three doubles into that same space. Okay, so we've reached you know, another point. So then again, since this is the, what will be the, the valley side, if you will, after chaining one, you do your three doubles into that chain one space. Alrighty. 
chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space, chain one, and we reached another point. So that's three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Three doubles, chain two, and three doubles. And that really is <clears throat> how the rest of the round is going to go. So I will meet back up with you for round seven, which is slightly different, you know, and uh, we'll get to it. All right. So basically, you know, just keep going around and around and around, you know, for every chain one space, it's just three double crochets separated by chain one, three double crochets, chain one, and then in your point, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, and just mosey your way along until you reach the beginning, where in this space, it would be three double crochets, then you chain one, slip stitch to the top here of this double crochet, slip stitch into here, into here, and then finally into the chain two space. And I will meet back up with you for round seven. All right, last but certainly not least, we have round seven. All right, so like I said, you know, it's just a matter of in the previous round, just doing your points in your points and your clusters of three in your chain one spaces, really simple. Now for this one, we need a decrease again for our valleys. So we're gonna start as normal with a chaining up of three because we're in a point, then two more double crochets for our first cluster of three, chain two, and three more doubles for our corner point. Well, to say corner, not quite, because this is an eight-pointed star. <laughs> it doesn't quite have corners, it has points. All right, so now, as far as this side is concerned, we need a divot, and the last divot was right down here. Now, you wanna keep an eye on these points right here when you're doing your repeat of round seven, because we need another decrease right here, right here. So we need to skip over this space here. Well, we haven't reached it yet, so we're gonna do a cluster in here. So chain one and do a cluster of three into the next chain one space. Like so, chain one. Now, because we skipped over these two clusters down here, we did rows five and six. And so, yeah, so it's five and six. <clears throat> no, sorry, five and six, pardon me. <laughs> uh, we need to skip over these two clusters. So we need to go directly into this space right here. So skipping over this middle one, which is in direct alignment with the last. So skipping over this one, going into this one with three doubles. That's one, two, and three. So now we have the same behave. We have the same sort of opening here as we do down here. So there's two regular rows, decrease row, decrease row. Alrighty. Now, I believe that the reason why the original designer, she opted not to have these chain one spaces is because it would make it a little bit more squinched together and a little less open. Me personally, I don't mind it so much. You know, but again, to each their own. All right, so we have another corner point. So chain one, three doubles, chain two, 
three doubles into the point. So we got three doubles, chain two, three doubles, like so, chain one. Next chain one space, a regular cluster of three. And we need to skip over these two clusters, just like we did down here. So chain one, skip over the next chain one space, going into the next one with three doubles. chain one, and we've got another point. So three doubles, chain two, three doubles, and quite frankly, that's how the rest of round seven is going to go. Just be sure that when you're going along that, you know, you do your rounds five and six, completely normal. But then on the seventh, just be sure that you aren't doing a cluster into this space right here. Otherwise, it's gonna throw you off. Also, what I really do suggest is that when you're doing round seven, to double check you know, uh, your entire round before going on to the repeats of round five and six, you know, otherwise you're going to end up on doing a lot of work. You know, <laughs> believe you me, I've been there. I've done it. Trust me. All right. So we did our point chain one and then another cluster into the next chain one space. You know, I know how aggravating it can be when you have to undo your work. Been there. Got the bumper sticker. <laughs> All right, so again, we have to skip over these two clusters because we did right down there. So skipping over this space, going to the next with three doubles. Chain one, and we've reached another point. So three doubles, chain two, three doubles. chain two and three doubles. One, oop, there we go. And two and three. Oop. There we are. So basically how it works is since we're doing this decrease here and then the next two rounds are going to be regular where it's going to be a star point in here, a regular cluster in here, a regular cluster in here, regular one in here, another point in here. Next round, same deal. You know, it'll just keep on growing and growing and growing. It's a fabulous thing. So I'm going to finish up this round and I'll meet back up with you. Alrighty. All right, so I'm almost done with round seven. I just need to skip over these two spaces in the middle. Do my last cluster and then my join. And then I want to show you what I have. There we go. Chain one. And then, of course, my, my slip stitch into the top third chain of that first double crochet. There we go. Slip stitch into the next two double crochets. And there, and then slip stitch into that chain two space, and voila. All right, and so I'm gonna spread it out for you. This is gorgeous. Now I didn't use the, the color pooling yarn because I was deliberately trying to do color pooling. You know, just had it around, you know. And voila, we have ourselves an eight-pointed granny star on its way to becoming 
a blanket. And I think this is a fabulous pattern. It's very, very simple. All you need to do is just follows, follow rounds uh, five, six, and seven. Now, personally, I, I ended on a round six, um, but as long as you follow the three round repeat, you will have no problems. It does lay flat. Oh, I love that so. And you could do a border. Me, personally, I opted not to. I like the edge just the way it is. Um, however, if you were to do a border, what I would suggest would be this. To do uh, double crochets into each double crochet. Uh, a double crochet per chain space. Okay. And when you reach these spaces right here, even though it is a chain two space, I would do three double crochets into each chain space. That's offhand how I would do it. You would want an odd number. And then if you do another round into that center one, you know, the, the second of the, the three, I would do three into that double crochet. That's how I would do it offhand. But I like the way this looks just fine. So listen, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial as always. So if you did, Give me a little thumbs up button down below because I appreciate your appreciation as always. And also please subscribe for more because I do try to post videos as often as I can, whether it's knitting, crocheting, audiobook narration, or please do visit my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I play video games, yes, and I give commentary. It's a lot of fun. Would love to see you there. And uh, I do post every day. So... Until next time, my dears, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.